Praise God, everybody. Lord Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners. And your words only, Jesus. Teach us. Let us learn from you, Lord. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this lesson in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want to tell y'all something. What I've been telling you the past couple videos is to seek God first. How to pray. And, you know, I went through a lesson with you how to pray. Pray before you make any decisions and wait for the answer. Okay. But I wanted you to turn because this is what the Lord gave me. Okay. I sat down. I said, Jesus, I said, what do you want me to study? That's what I do when I sit down. I said, what do you want me to study, Lord? And he'll tell me. And he had me go right to this, which is very much confirming what we've been talking about. Because Jesus is teaching. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Okay, and I told you, this is what the Lord told me. As you're reading along, write down words that you think you know, or maybe you don't know, right, or you're not sure. Write them down, find the definitions, and read the definitions along with them. You'll understand it better. So, 2 Timothy. Um, I've got it. I have it, you know, highlighted, so it's kind of hard to see. But know this, that in the last days, which we are in, perilous times will come. Okay, I stopped right there. I think I know what perilous means, but I looked it up anyway to be sure. Perilous, you know, write it down, the definition. Harsh, difficult, dangerous, painful, hard to deal with. That's perilous. So let's reread that. But know this, that in the last day, Harsh, difficult, dangerous, painful, hard to deal with times will come. Okay, make a little more sense to some people. Okay, just better to understand. This is how Jesus showed me. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, um, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. So verse 2. Hold on, I got to go back to verse 1, because I wrote down some more stuff. So, perilous was harsh, difficult, dangerous, painful, hard to deal with. So, to me, verse 1 says a time will come that will be dangerously hard to deal with. Okay, now verse 2 I just read, boasters, um, lovers of money, proud, blasphemers, unthankful, unholy, disobedient. So, to me, it says people will not be seeking Jesus. They will be doing things and making decisions from their own will. And not God's will. A society that is barren of virtue. So, just to show you, I wrote down barren. What is barren? Empty, without virtue. Behavior showing high moral standards. Let's, standards. Let's reread re 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 that. People will not be seeking. This is our meaning. I told you, write down what you think it means. After you pray, Jesus will help you understand it. So, you read it. Verse 2 says, For men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemy, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. What does that mean to me after I read it? People will not be seeking Jesus. They will be doing things and making decisions from their own will, their own mind, and not God's will. A society that is barren, empty, or without a virtue, behavior showing high moral standards. So to be a society that is empty or without high moral standards. Okay. So you just kind of write it out like that and put it all together. And when you're done, you, you understand what, it, what the board is saying to you. Let's go on to verse 3. This is how Jesus showed me to study it, y'all. So unloving, forgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Now, my past, I'd say four or five videos, we've been talking about this through Proverbs. Um, how to have, you got to have self-control and, you know, um, a foolish person, you know, their foolish mouth. Always trying to argue and, you uh, know, you're wrong, I'm right, and blah, blah, blah. You know, just running off at the mouth, foaming off at the mouth. It's foolish talk. Jesus said it's foolish. Okay? So, we've been talking about this. So, this is a confirmation from the Lord. This Timothy chapter 3 right here. Uh, what was number 3? Unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. So, to me... After reading that, that means no self-control, very mouthy, and argumentative, no brotherly love. They're anti-God people because God says, do not be like that. Jesus said to love your everybody, you know, and have self-control and don't be argumentative and everything. So people that are that way are anti-God. Okay, but let's go on to number four. They'll be traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, Rather than lovers of God. Okay. Um, that's number four. So it tells me people love themselves. And, and 
put man first and kicks God to the curb. Okay. Number five, having a form of godliness, a form, but denying the power. And from such people, stay away from. That's what the word says. So that's number five. It says, it's telling me that there's fake Christianity, fake Christians, okay? They're not doers. They're, they're talkers. They're not doers. They're doing the opposite of what God said for a child of God to do. So they're fake. Um, so it tells me that they're fake Christians. They're talkers. Um, there's zero faith and zero fruits. And Jesus said, stay away from them kind of people. Okay? So, there you go. If you see a child of God, somebody that's a born-again Christian, and they're, they're really a child of God, you will see some fruits. You will see some fruits. You will see, as my case, for example, I'm a teacher. Okay? So, what kind of teacher would I be if, if I told you what my purpose is, which is to teach God's Word to you? If I'm teaching and I don't go over any of this stuff with you, I would be fake. Okay? But if you see a teacher that's helping you grow, helping you to understand God's Word, helping you to study God's Word, helping you move up in God's Word, that's fruits. Okay? But if I just sit here and come on and tell you to read 2 Timothy chapter 3, and then I just sit on the uh, tube and play my guitar for you, I'm teaching you nothing. I'm a talker. Okay? So there's going to be some action. Faith is action word. All right, let's go on to number six. For this sort, for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away um, by various lusts. Number six tells me that these kind of people are talkers, just like to talk, and will cause confusion and lead people into captivity with their lost words. To people who are new to the word. Okay, so these kind of people that pretend to walk around. This is what the word's saying. These kind of people that pretend to walk around to be this, I'm, I'm St. Peter. You know, I'm the most biggest Christian in the world. And all you see them is constantly arguing, foolish talk, you know, um, boasting, bragging. You know, they're just trying to stir up trouble to get their points across. Jesus said, they're foolish and stay away from them because they're not, when they act that way, if you act that way, you're not acting out Christian behavior. It's not Christian behavior. So, and there's a lot of it out there. So much of it out there. And Jesus says, stay away from those people. Those people, you know, say when it's a newborn baby Christian, um, sees you, you know, with your argument of spirit and, oh, you're this, you're that, and you're not this, you're not that, and God didn't do this, and God didn't do that. All they see you do is argue, and it's, it's a very horrible. There's no fruit there. And that's not Christian behavior. So it could lead us, a newborn baby in Christ, away or down the wrong path, and they think that's okay to do that. And that's very dangerous, very dangerous. So let's go on to number seven. It says, always learning, and it said um, it can lead a person away, okay? Always learning and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. So that means this person is around, this person is sitting around, you know, Bible teaching, um, Bible prophecy. You know, this person's hearing, okay? But they don't know squat about it because they're not in God's word and they're not seeking the Lord. They're not spending that right time with God. So therefore, there it says, they're always learning but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth because they're still in that foolish anti-God behavior. Okay, and then he said, now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, I might have said that wrong, resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. Okay, so you might say, you know, something out of the Bible, and people will argue with you when the Bible says it. They'll argue with you, okay, when the Bible says it, the word of God, but they will progress no further. For their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. So folly, which is what? Lack of good sense or foolishness. It says that these kind of people will not progress because of their lack of good sense or foolishness. And 
that it will uh, show to everybody. Everybody will know. So, let's go on to verse 10. But you have carefully followed my doctrines, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance. Because we're going to have all that as our walk with the Lord. We're going to suffer. Jesus did. Why shouldn't we? We will. You know, we already are. Um, you'll have all that. Persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch. At I can't pronounce this word. Lechanum. At Lystra. <laughs> What persecutions I endured, and out of those, I mean, and out of them, all the Lord delivered me. So bottom line, he's saying he had persecutions, but the Lord delivered him, okay? Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. That's in uh, Timothy 3, verse 12. Yes, and all who desire to live, live godly. In Christ Jesus will suffer persecution of some kind, okay? But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, okay? And that's what I do. I learn from Jesus Christ, so I know, you know, what what I'm doing is, correctly of God and if you're learning you do too okay but if you have all these foolish behaviors you got to get rid of them and said and and from that childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus and it says that all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness so Basically, what it is, is you will, if you know the scripture, and you live the scripture, okay, then, then the faith is in you, and you are in the faith, and you are, if you're really in that scripture, you're going to do what it says, okay, and what it says not to do, you will not do it, which is talk foolishly, or act foolishly, you know, um, if you're a child of God, and you're saying you're a child of God, then please be one. Be one. And I've got like maybe three videos back or something uh, where I just gave that lesson on, in the book of Proverbs. You know, and you're not going to see a child of God, you know, in, a, in an argumentative state and smart mouthing and making ugly comments. And that's not Jesus. That's not his spirit. So I just read to you that we are in these very days. We're in these very days that we're in very harsh, difficult, dangerous, painful, hard to deal with times, okay? But as you said, if you stay in the Word, and you stay in prayer, and you push through it, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine, but if you're on the other side, where you're just depending on man to fix things for you, and you're not going to God, and you're doing all this stuff that's anti-God, anti-Christ... Okay, then it's time to make a change and get serious about your walk with God. Because like I told you in many videos, we are the only Bible some people will ever, ever read. And we need to be that. The Bible, a walking Bible. We need to be a doer for Jesus Christ. We need to live it. We need to talk it. You need to be very careful when you're on other people's videos and those comment sections. You know, I seen one, let's put it for example, yesterday. I seen one where um, I like this certain pastor. I like to listen to this one certain pastor. And I seen another video that this man was pretty big. And he was really, really, really putting down this pastor that I sometimes like to listen to. Really putting him down in the dirt. But, and I thought that was so foolish. That was foolish. Very ungodly, very unchrist like thing to do on this pastor's page. You, you don't talk like that. It's ridiculous. Jesus called it foolish talk. Very foolish. Okay. And, but what really stuck out to me that made me angry was he said, uh, he tried to show scripture where healing is not for today. Healing is for today. Healing's for today just as much as it was when Jesus walked the face of this earth. Um, salvation is for today. Healing is for today. All that's for today. Okay. Same thing. God said, I'm not, I'm the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever, and things will never change, okay? 
So he was really putting this particular pastor down in the dirt because the pastor made little cancer hats and they prayed over him for people that had cancer that Jesus can heal, not, not from because of the pastor or the hat, but because it was prayed over, you know, and where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst is what he says. You know, prayer is powerful. Especially when there's more people involved in the prayer. The Bible tells you to pray with each other. Pray with each other. It's much, much more powerful. Okay? But it was very foolish and, and I got very angry. But I had to be very careful in the comments section. Because on your carnal mind, when something makes you mad like that, your carnal, carnal mind wants to be like, are you stupid? Are you stupid? You know, that's what we want to say, you know, but no. Would Jesus say, are you stupid? No, I just, you know, I had to put a Bible scripture. And I'm like, and I would be, I was like, I'd be very careful, very careful with what you say. Because the Bible says you will be judged for every word you say. Especially when you're talking against one of God's children. Whew, that's dangerous water. Dangerous water. So, just be very careful. You know, I want to help you understand what Jesus is helping me understand and that's my job that's my purpose and that's my honor to him is to help you understand that we got to clean it up we're in the last days y'all we're in the last of the last days and we have to clean it up because we're walking bibles okay we're supposed to be because there's a lot of people out there are lost and I just read to you there's a lot of people who claim to be Christians but they don't know the word because they don't do it at all and they're lost. So we don't get mad and hate them. We pray for them. We pray for them. Because we don't want nobody to go to hell. You know, but there's a lot of Christians. Well, the Bible said that. There's a lot of people that thinks they're going to heaven that's not going. The Bible says, very wide is the gate to hell. Very narrow is the road to heaven. And very few find it. Very few so please get that into your head because that's the truth. That's God's word. So step back. You're like, am I one of those on the very narrow road? Well, step back and take a look at yourself and be honest with yourself. Am I one of those mouthy um, haters and, and foolish talkers? And Am I walking the Bible or am I just talking it? Am I walking it or am I talking it? Sit back and evaluate yourself. And then I showed you. The Lord showed me to, to study it. That's how you study the Bible. Okay, sit down and read the verse. Write out what you think it means, what it means to you. And Jesus will help you. Pick out the words, define them. And at the end of it, when you're done with all that, your own Bible study. When you're done with that, you know, write down what kind of things do I have to change in my life to make my life more like what, like is what it's supposed to be, like what I just read. So you could say, you know, um... Self-control, for example, you could say, I, I, I need to work on my self-control, especially like in the comment section, or um, I need to not be so headstrong, you know, and uh, lighten up a bit, and um, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. You could say, you know, I need to, um, yeah, I don't know, just work on whatever you need to work on, because you just read it, what, what you're supposed to be like, okay? Now work on it. That's how Jesus told me to study the Word. Write it all out, understand it, find the words, reread it with the definition, and at the end, write down what kind of things you need to work on to make your life what you just read. Okay, you don't need a group of people to study the Bible. Jesus wants it, you and him, or you and your family. Y'all could do that together, you know, and here it's just me and Jesus, okay? It's me and Jesus. Sometimes my grandchildren, when they're here, I definitely teach them the word when they're here. And my daughter does too, but for most of the time, it's just me by myself studying the Word and Jesus. You know, He's teaching me, okay? And uh, But if you have a family that you can sit down with and study the God's Word, do it. Do it. But study it that way. Try it that way, I showed you, because that's what Jesus told me to tell each one of you. Define the words. Maybe you got to go verse by verse by verse by verse. Read the first verse. Write down what it means to you. Read the second verse. Define words. Write down what it means to you. Reread them. Okay? You'll get a clearer understanding. All right? So, that's why I say there is some work to do to be a child of God, most definitely. 
because we have to live it because we are witnesses and that's what we're called to do so don't ever think for one minute that you're here for no good reason i read a comment today where somebody said they're here for no good reason no reason no you're here because god put you here you're here for a reason the same reason i'm here and that is to be a witness because there's more people lost than there is that are saved and going to heaven there's more people that are lost wide is the gate to hell Narrow the road to heaven, very few will find it. So there's more lost people out there than there is the, the not lost. So it's our duty to live and be that light bulb. We got to be that Bible. We got to walk it, not just talk it. And in order to walk it, you got to get in it and read it and study it and know it. And that's our duty. That's your duty. So anybody thinks you're not here for a reason, you're here for a big, a huge reason, humongous reason. To get in that word and be a light and go grab some of them souls that are getting going to hell. Alright, if you don't know Jesus, ask him. Get off that pity po mode that I'm not no good. I'm not this. That's not that's a lie from Satan. You're good because God created you and he has you here. And now let him use you. Go seek him. Dig in his word. Go after him constantly. And then eventually you'll see where he's going to use you. He's training you. Just like you told me uh, seven months ago, he said, you're in training to teach. And he's training me still, so I wouldn't say I'm a full-blown teacher. I'd say he's still, I'm a, under his training. But I am to share with you everything he teaches me. I'm under, training under Jesus Christ. How big of a teacher he's going to make me, I don't know. I don't know, but we'll find out. But right now, I'm in training, you're in training to teach the Word of God because that's what we're called to do. So let's go do it. Let's go do it. And let's be careful how we are, you know, um, to the world, to our family, to people we talk to, to comments. Be very careful. Be more godlike. Be more godly. All right. In Jesus' name. And pray. Pray about your elections. I told you. Pray. Ask the Lord. Don't make any decisions to anything unless you seek God first. Okay. That's what I'll tell you. All right, and I just read to you all that. So in Jesus' name, go get your notebooks and go study. Study, study exactly how I showed you to, because that's how Jesus showed me. God bless you. Oh, and there was five of y'all that donated to my ministry. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And um, it does help. Yes, it does. And I'm also glad that you're learning and growing and that I'm able to help you. So take it and, and, and grow. Run with it and then go teach it. In Jesus' name, thank y'all so much.